Welcome to Fawn Radio Theater, brought to you by the talented theater students at Deer Park Junior High School in Deer Park, Texas. This semi-regular podcast has the nostalgia of those old-timey radio shows with the energy of junior high drama. I am their teacher, Jennifer McLaughlin, and I thank you for coming with us on our journey of finding new ways to keep performing during a global pandemic. This episode of Fawn Radio Theater features the script, Sorry, Wrong Number, performed by the second period. This was a script Ms. Mack found in the back of a closet, and after research, found it to be in the public domain. This episode is brought to you by the excessive amount of coffee Ms. Mack drank while editing this episode. Coffee. She drinks it for your protection. Good evening. I'm, this is the Man in Black. I'm called the Man in Black because I'm in version for light. I'm here in the studio tonight. What are you doing? Didn't light, you fool. Imbeciles. Excuse me. Where was I? Oh, yes. Tonight. I'm here to introduce to you a program written by a woman who has seen into the darkest side of human weakness. The hateful. The mean. The thoughtless. That leads to... Murder. Tonight, from San Diego, we present a compelling actress we discovered in the dark and dreary eucalyptus groves of Rancho Santa Fe. Miss Ruth Godley appears in a study of terror written by Lucille Fletcher, Lucille Fletcher called Sorry, Wrong Number, about a woman who is caught in an unfortunate predicament involving the telephone company and the police. This program is not for the squeamish. Listen at your own risk. Aubrey, I've been trying to call Murray Hill for 0098 for the last half hour and it's been busy. I don't see how it could possibly be busy that long. Can you try that number for me, please? I'll be glad to try that number for you. One moment, please. I don't see how it could be busy all this time. My hu- it's my husband's office, and I'm all alone here in the house. My health is very poor, and I'm feeling nervous all day. Ringing Murray Hill, 40098. Hello? Oh, is Mr. Stevenson there? Hello? Hello? Hello. Hello, George. Yes, this is George speaking. Hello, who is this? What number am I calling, please? I'm here with our client. Oh, good. Is everything okay? Is the coast clear for tonight? Yes, George. He says the coast is clear for tonight. Okay. Okay. Where are you now? In the phone booth. Don't worry. Everything's okay. Very well. You need the address. Yes, I know. I know. Let's see. Now at 11 o'clock, the private patrolman goes around the corner to 2nd Avenue for a beer. That's right. 11 o'clock. And be sure all the lights downstairs are out. Okay. There should be only one light visible from the street. Okay. What's that? Just a minute, George. Oh, our client tells me that at 11.15, a train crosses a bridge. It makes a noise in case a window is open and she should scream. Hello? What number is this? Please? Okay, I understand. It's 11.15, the train. Yeah, do you remember everything else, George? Yeah, yeah. I'll make it as quick as little blood as possible, because our client does not wish to make her suffer. That's right. You'll use a knife. Yes, a knife. It'll be okay. Then afterwards, I'll remove the rings and bracelets and the jewelry in the borrow drawer because our client wishes it to look like a simple robbery. Don't worry, everything's okay. I know. Oh, how awful! How unspeakably awful! Operator! Your number, please? Operator, I, I've just been cut off. What number are you calling? Well, Operator, I was supposed to be calling Murray Hill 40098. But it, it wasn't. Some wires must have gotten cross. I was cutting to a wrong number, and I I just heard the most dreadful thing. Something about a uh, murder, and, and operator, you'll simply have to retrace that call at once. I beg I, your pardon. I know it was a wrong number, and I had no business listening, but these two men, they were cold-blooded fiends, and they're going to murder somebody. Some poor innocent woman who's all alone in a house near a bridge. And we've, we've got to stop them. We've just got to. What number were you dialing? It doesn't matter what number I was calling. This was a wrong number, and you dialed it for me. And we've got to find out what it was. Immediately. What number did you call? Oh, why, you're so stupid. What time is it? Do you mean to tell me that you can't find out what the number was just now? 
I'll connect you to the chief operator. Oh, I think it's perfectly shameful. Now look, I was, it was obviously a case of some little slip of the finger. I told you to try Murray Hill 40098 for me. You dialed it, but your finger must have slipped, and I was connected with some other number. I could hear them, but they couldn't hear me. Now, I simply failed to see why you couldn't make that same mistake again on purpose. Why couldn't you try to dial Murray Hill 40098 in the same careless way? Murray Hill 40098, I will try to get that for you. Thank you. I'm sorry, Murray Hill 40098 is busy. Operator, operator! Your call, please. You didn't try to get that wrong number at all. I asked you explicitly, and all you did was dial correctly. I'm sorry, what number were you calling? Can't you for once forget what number I'm calling and do something for me? Now, I want to trace that call. It's my civic duty, and it's your civic duty to trace that call and apprehend those dangerous leaders. And if you won't, I will connect you with the chief operator. Well, please! Let's talk can make anyone understand. This is the chief operator. Oh, chief operator, I want you to trace a call, a telephone call, immediately. I don't know where it came from or who was making it, but it's absolutely necessary that it be tracked down because it was about a murder that someone's planning. A terrible, cold-blooded murder of a poor, innocent woman. Tonight, at 11.15. I see. Can you trace it for me? Can you track down those men? Well, I'm not certain. It depends. It depends on what? It depends on whether the call is still going on. If it's a live call, we can trace it down on the equipment. If it's been disconnected, we can't. Disconnected? If the parties have stopped talking to each other. Oh, but of course they must have stopped talking to each other by now. That was at least five minutes ago. And they didn't sound like the type that would make a long call. Well, I could try tracing it. May I have your name, please? Miss Stevenson. Miss Albert Stevenson. But and, listen. And your telephone number, please? Plaza 32098. But if you go on wasting all this time... Why do you want this call traced? Why? No reason. I mean, I really felt very strongly that something ought to be done about it. These men sounded like killers. They're dangerous. They're going to murder this woman at 11.15 tonight. I thought the police ought to know. Have you reported this to the police? Well, no, not yet. You want this call checked purely as a private individual? Yes, but meanwhile... I'm sorry, Miss Stevenson, but I'm afraid we couldn't make this check out for you and trace the call on your say-so. But... As a private individual. Why? We have to do something more official. Oh, for heaven's sake! You mean to tell me I can't report there's going to be a murder without getting tied in all this red tape? Why, it's perfectly idiotic! Well, all right, all right. I'll call the police. I'm sure that'll be the best way to deal with. Ridiculous! Never heard of such nonsense. You call, please. Police department. Give me the police department, please. Ringing the police department. Oh, can't you bring them direct? Police station 43, Sergeant Martin speaking. Police Department, this is Miss Stevenson. Miss Elbert Smythe Stevenson of 5353 North Sutton Place. I'm calling to report a murder. Uh. I mean, the murder hasn't been committed yet. I just overheard plans for it over the telephone, over a wrong number that the operator gave me. I've been trying to trace down the call myself, but everybody's so stupid, and I guess in the end, you're the only people who could do anything. Y yes, ma'am. I heard their plans distinctly. Two men were talking, and they were going to murder some woman at 11.15 tonight. She lived in a house near a bridge, and, and are you listening to me? Uh, yes, ma'am. And there was a private patrolman on the street. He was going to go around for beer on 2nd Avenue. And there was some third man, a client, who was paying to have this poor woman murdered. They were going to take her rings and bracelets and use a knife. Well, it's unnerved me dreadfully, and I'm not well. Mm, yes, I, I see. When was all this, ma'am? About eight minutes ago. Well, then you can't do something. You do understand. What's your name, ma'am? Miss Stevenson. Miss Albert Stevenson. And your address? 53, 53 North Sutton Place. That's near a bridge. The Queensboro Bridge, you know? And we have a private patrolman yeah. on the street. And 2nd Avenue is... And uh, what number were you calling? Murray Hill 40098. But that wasn't the number I ever heard. I mean, Murray Hill 40098 is my husband's office. Uh-huh. He's working late tonight, and I was trying to reach him to ask him to come home. 
I'm an invalid, you know, and it's the maid's night off, and I hate to be alone, even though he says, yeah, well, as long as I have the telephone here right beside my bed. Well, we'll look into it, Mrs. Stevenson, and see if we can check with the telephone company. The telephone company said they couldn't check the call. The parties have stopped talking. I've already taken care of that. Oh, you have? Yes. And personally, I feel you ought to do something more immediate and drastic than just check the call. What good does checking the call do if they stop talking? By the time you track it down, well, they'll have already committed the murder. Yeah, well, we'll take care of it. Don't worry. I say the whole thing calls for a search. A complete and, and thorough search of the whole city. I'm very near the bridge, and I'm not very far from you Second said? Avenue. And I know I feel a whole lot better if you sent around a radio car to this neighborhood at once. Well, what makes you think that the murder is going to be committed in your neighborhood, ma'am? Well, I, I... I don't know. Only the coincidence is so horrible. Second Avenue, the patrolman, the bridge... Yeah, well, Second Avenue, you know, is a very long street, ma'am. And you know how many bridges there are in the city of New York alone? Not to mention Brooklyn, Staten Island, the Queens, and the Bronx. I know all that! How do you know this isn't some little house on Staten Island, on some little Second Avenue you never heard about? How do you know they're even talking about New York at all? call on the New York dialing system. Well, maybe it was a long distance call you overheard. No! <laughs> you know, telephones are funny things. Now look, why don't you look at it this way? Supposing you hadn't broken in on that telephone call, supposing you got your husband the way you always do, you wouldn't be so upset now, would you? I... well, I suppose not. But it sounded so inhumane, so cold -blooded. Well, a lot of murders are plotted in this city every day, ma'am. And we've managed to prevent almost all of them. But a clue of this kind is so vague, it isn't much more to us than no clue at all. But surely you can... Unless you have some reason for thinking that this phony and somebody was planning to murder you. Me? No, I hardly think so. I, I mean, why should anybody? I'm alone all day and night. I see nobody except my maid, Eloise. She's a big 200-pounder. Yeah. She's too lazy to bring up my breakfast tray. Mm -hmm. And the only other person is my husband, Albert. He's crazy about me. He adores me. He waits on my hand and foot and mm -hmm. has scarcely left my side since I took sick 12 years ago. Yeah, well, there's nothing for you to worry about. And just leave the rest to us. We'll take care of it. Well, what will you do? It's so late. It's nearly 11 now. We'll take care of it, lady. Well, will you broadcast it all over the city? And send out squads and warn your radio cars to watch out, especially in suspicious neighborhoods like mine. Lady, I said we'll take care of it. Now, I got a couple of matters here on my desk that require immediate attention. So, good night, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, you idiot! Oh, why did I hang up on the phone like that? I don't think I'm a fool. Oh, why does an elder go home? Why doesn't he? I'll get the operator again. Your call, please. Operator, for heaven's sake, will you ring that Murrayville 40098 number again? I can't think what's keeping him so long. I will try it for you. I'm sorry, Murrayville 40098 is busy. I will try it. I can hear it. You don't have to tell me. I know it's busy. Oh, if I could only get out of this bed for a little while. If I could only get a breath of fresh air, or just get out the window and see the street. Hello? Albert, hello? 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 Oh, what's the matter with this phone? Hello? 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 For heaven's sake, who is this? Hello? 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 What are they trying to do to me? Your call, please. Hello? Operator, I don't know what's the matter with this telephone tonight, but it's positively driving me crazy. I've never seen such inefficient, miserable service. Now look, look, I'm an invalid, and I'm very nervous, and I'm not supposed to be annoyed, but if this keeps going on much longer... What seems to be the trouble? Well, everything's wrong. I haven't had one bit of satisfaction out of one call I've made this evening. The whole world could be murdered for all you people care, and now my phone keeps ringing and ringing, and bringing and bringing and bringing every five seconds or so, and when I pick it up, no one's there. I'm sorry, if you want to hang up, I'll test it for you. I don't want you to test it for me. I want you to put that call through, whatever it is, at once. I'm afraid I cannot do that. I... You can't? And why? Why, may I ask? 
The dial system is automatic. If someone is trying to dial your number, there is no way to check whether the call is coming through the system or not. Unless the person is trying to reach you complains to his particular operator. Well, Wall is stupid. And meanwhile, I have to sit here in my suffering every time that phone rings about me everything. I'll try to check the trouble. Check it! Check it! See you, ma'am. Oh, what's the use of talking to you? You're so stupid. I'll fix her. Your call, please. Young woman, I don't know your name, but there are ways of finding you out, and I'm going to report you to your superiors for the most unpardonable rudeness and insolence yeah. that has ever been my privilege. Oh, give me the business office at once. You may dial that number direct. Dial it direct. I'll do no such thing. I don't need to know the number. The number is in the directory, or you may secure it by dialing in for Listen here. You, oh, what's the use? directory. I don't have a classified. I mean, I'm too nervous to look it up. I don't know how to use the book. I will connect you with information. Perhaps she will be able to help you. No, no! Oh, you're being spiteful, aren't you? You don't care what happens to me. I can die if you want to care. I have a telegram here for Miss Albert Stevenson. Is there anyone there to receive the message? I, I'm Miss Stevenson. The telegram is as follows. Miss Albert Stevenson, 53 North Sutton Place, New York, New York. Darling, terribly sorry. Tried to get to you for last hour, but line busy. Leaving for Boston 11 p.m. tonight on urgent business. Back tomorrow afternoon. Keep happy. Love, signed Albert. Oh, no. Do you wish us to uh, deliver a copy of this message? No, no, thank you. Th thank you, madam. Good night. Good night. No! No, I don't believe it. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. Nobody knows. I'll be all alone. It's some trick. It's some trick. I know it. Your number, please. Operator, try that number. Murray Phil 40098 for me. Just once more, please. You may dial that direct. Oh! Four O oh, O oh, nine eight. Oh no, you're gone. Oh, Albert, how could you? How could you? Oh, but I can't stay alone tonight. I can't. If I'm alone one more second, I'll go mad. I don't care what he says, but the expenses. I'm a sick woman. I'm entitled to some consideration. information may I help you? I, I want the telephone number of Hinchley Hospital. Hinchley Hospital. Do you have a street address? No, no, it's somewhere in the 70s. 
It's a very small, private, and exclusive hospital where I had my appendix out two years ago. Hinchley, H-E-N-C-H-L-Y. One moment, please. Please hurry, and please, what is the time? You may find out the time by dialing Meridian 71212. Oh, for heaven's sake, I have no time to be dialing. The number of Hensley Hospital is Butterfield 89970. Is that Hensley Hospital? Hensley Hospital. Nurse's Registry. Who's it that you want to speak to? I want the Nurse's Registry at once. I want a trained nurse. I want to hire her immediately for tonight. I see what, that, what the nature of this case is, madam. Nurse, I am very nervous. I need soothing and companionship. You see, my husband is away, and I'm- Have you I'm... been recommended to us by any doctor in particular, madam? No, but I really don't see why all this is necessary. I want a trained nurse. I was a patient in your hospital two years ago, and after all, I do expect to pay this person for attending me. We quite understand that, madam, but these are war times, you know. Registered nurses are very scarce. Just now, our superintendent has asked us to send people out on only cases where the physician is in charge and feels that is absolutely necessary. Well, it is absolutely necessary. I'm a sick woman. I, I'm very upset, very. I belong in this house, and I'm an invalid, and tonight I overheard a telephone conversation that upset me dreadfully. A woman is going to be killed when a train crosses the bridge. In fact, if someone doesn't come at once, I'm afraid I'll go out of my mind. Well, I'll speak to Miss Phillips as, she, as soon as she comes in. And what's your name, madam? Miss Phillips? When do you expect her to come in? I really couldn't say. She went out for supper at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock? But it's not 11 yet. Oh, oh, my clock has stopped. I thought it was running down. What time is it? Just 15 minutes past 11. What was that? What was that, madam? That, that glitch is not in my own telephone. So someone had lifted the receiver off the hook, off the extension telephone downstairs. I didn't hear it, madam. So, about this nurse that you- But I did! There's someone in this house! Someone downstairs in the kitchen! And they're listening to me now! They're listening- I won't pick it up. I won't let them hear me. I'll be quiet. And they'll think- But if you don't call someone now while they're still down there, there'll be no time! I've got to get that off here. Your call, please. Operator! Operator! I'm in desperate trouble. I... I'm sorry. I cannot hear you. Please speak louder. I don't dare speak louder. There's someone listening. Can you hear me now? I'm sorry. I... But you've got to hear me. Please. Please. You've got to help me. There's someone in this house. Someone who's going to murder me. You've got to get in touch with me. There it is. Did you hear it? He put it down. He's put down the extension phone. He's coming up the stairs. Give me the police department. One moment, please. I will connect you. Police Department, Precinct 53, Sergeant Martin speaking. Uh, uh, police Department? Uh, I'm sorry, must have got the wrong number. Don't worry, everything's okay. While things didn't turn out too well for Miss Stevenson, fortunately the author of tonight's tale spared you the embarrassment of including a song performed by our producer's wife. Mr. Stevenson, by the way, did not completely escape justice. He moved to California with his secretary, Marge, where he has one seat on the San Diego City Council. Sorry Wrong Number was originally produced and broadcasted live by Columbia Broadcasting on May 25, 1943, starring the legendary actress of legitimate theater, Miss Agnes Moorhead. Sorry, Wrong Number was recorded during the second period with the voice talents of Talia, Rachel, Jaden, Wyatt, Adrena, Jocelyn, Logan, Leanne, Parker, Brooklyn, and Autumn as Mrs. Stevenson. Our sound techs were Aaliyah, Tristan, Wyatt, Daniel, Siklali, and Dylan, with Colin as our hallway monitor and McKenna as our stage manager. Show artwork provided by Logan. 
Thank you for joining us on this episode of Fawn Radio Theater. Don't forget to follow DPJH Theater on Instagram. That's theater with an R-E. And hit that subscribe button while you're at it. The kids have wild dreams of thousands of fans and making merch. Our ever-present shout-out to our principal, Dr. Tiffany Reagan, our fine arts director, Jason Dove, and Autonautics.com for our intro and outro music. This is Miss Mack saying, don't stop believing.